Hi, everybody. This is David P. France coming to you from Basel, Switzerland. The interview that you're about to see is one that I conducted a couple of days ago with Nancy Paradis. Nancy is the artistic director of our own organization called LA Dance Moves. It's a media company that's focused on dance. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at one of the promo videos, and then we're going to go straight to the interview. Hi everybody, this is David P. France coming to you from Basel, Switzerland. Before we get this interview started, I'd like everyone out there to like the video, subscribe to our YouTube and BitChute channel, and also share the videos with your friends and family. This is David P. France TV. We are a platform for creators and creative people, artists, inventors, thought leaders, small business owners, and entrepreneurs. And today I have the pleasure of introducing you guys to someone that I met again on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is very, very good, you guys. Um, and I suggest um, anyone who is out there that is on it, you really should consider using it as a creator platform because it is phenomenal. And I'm speaking with Nancy Parody. Nancy, how you doing? Hi, good morning. I'm doing great. All right. Yeah, look, we're about <laughs> nine hours difference, but it's all, well, 12 hours difference. I'm, Nancy, I'm bright and early. You're yeah, wrapping Nancy, up your day. <laughs> Nancy is the artistic <laughs> director. She's an educator and she's a healing or healing storyteller. And the organization that she has created is called LA Dance Moves. And, um, you know, welcome, welcome, Nancy. Tell us, tell us about your organization. I'm very curious and I'm sure the audience is very curious as well. Tell us a little bit about your organization. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Well, it's, it's multifaceted. LA Dance Moves comes from the fact that I just love versatility. So with the dance moves, it means I embrace all styles. And um, the second part is I'm just a music driven and music is a background of mine. So I collaborate with not only artists, but composers and uh, basically bring their music to a visual life. Mm -hmm. And I, it's per project, so I collaborate with artists as they come into my life, and uh, very serendipitously. And the whole reason for it is to touch the lives of our audience as well as the artists involved. So it's it's kind of this big gamut of why I've created this platform. And lastly, it seems to be a healing place for the dancers themselves and artists. Yeah. When work on my projects so it's and how did how did it get started i mean um there, well, it, how and how long has it been in existence yeah i started around 2015 just stepping into doing my own projects per project um maybe out of frustration you know as the artistic frustration of not really being able to do work the way i want to because i work at uh, colleges and universities and you know, having that access to concert work with the students is great, but I really wanted to create my way. So I, it started in 2015, I invited pre-professional dancers to work with me and to give them that platform of working on dance on film 
working for camera, working with a cameraman. So all of my work is on film. Yeah. So it was a media company <laughs> even way before COVID hit. Yeah, yeah. So why dance? I mean, um, I know why dance, at least for me, but I think every dance person has their own personal story, but maybe something else as well that's motivating you to be involved with dance. You know, I was, I was listening to um, a presentation I did a couple of months ago, and I actually started it with this, and I'd forgotten I'd said this, but I honestly feel that dance chooses you, that you don't choose it. <laughs> and like, who would choose this art form, you know? Right. And so uh, I took a class when I was six years old. My mom brought me to a class. Madam Binda, we were at a cafeteria at my elementary school holding onto the backs of chairs and I fell in love at six. Mm -hmm. And like a laser focus, this is what I wanna do. I love this. I love the discipline, you know, the music. And even at that young age, knowing that almost like martial arts, like it falls into place and you build and build and build. My dad was a Marine and a musician and there was something about the discipline in him that I think attracted me to ballet. Ballet specifically, but I love dance, just all forms. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that later on in my career. But yeah, yeah I got the bug <laughs> early. Right, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, it picked me as well. Yeah. I mean, dance, I, I didn't choose it, it chose me. I think you are right on. And then, um, you know, just a bit about my story was that I was watching my sister dance. That's how I started. And I just copied her. And then it got to the point where I was copying her rather well, right? So, um, but I didn't really get it, right? There's certain people that get it early, right? Like even like why you're there. Like I didn't get why I was there until much, much later. I sort of mimicked my way through a bit anyway. Um, well, let, let's get to what is it like for you every day? I mean, um, with regard to your organization, for you personally, how do you yeah. approach this uh, as a dance practitioner? Yeah, well, I started teaching pretty young out here in Los Angeles, I think I was 22 or 23, wow. and just building those skills. It's very intimidating as a young dancer to teach. So I, I give it up for all of the younger dancers. Who, that's a way of income. But I remember it took me probably about 10 years to really get more comfortable and confident but when I stepped into teaching at universities, I think UC, UC Irvine was my first university, um, Loyola Marymount, and then a community college, Moore Park, I, I just really was blown away that the, these people would intentionally place themselves in these classes, you know, where it's different than kids' classes where they have to take ballet or dance, you know, in order to perform. These people elected to learn and grow, and it just affected my life so much. I loved creating the lesson plan and how I'm gonna bring them through the semester. What are they gonna learn? What am I gonna learn from them? So this exchange began happening where these, <laughs> these kids just affect my life so much. Mm -hmm. I, I love teaching my courses. And then of course, when a course happens to be preparing them for a concert, I, I get to teach them dance and, and choreography. That's just a dream, you yeah, know? Like, yeah, yeah. Do what I love and get paid and, and hopefully teach them life skills in addition to dancing in concert. And, um, and then my own company, <laughs> you know, they say we work so we can fulfill our passion. Right. <laughs> so I basically save, 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 save. And when I can, I can do a project and, and that's where I can do it all my way and really touch the lives of these artists. So I wanted to say that now that I'm a little bit older, I've definitely gone through injury after injury from doing too much. Every time I've been injured, it's because I'm doing too much for my students. Like, and now I'm learning to flip-flop that where I really condition my body. I try to every day to be at my best self, but I make them do more of the work. And I do more of a description and letting them show and empowering the students. So in a way, I'm a better teacher now than I was when I was younger. Yeah. So did you have to get used to the fact that Let's say when, you, I mean, you started very young, right? And you were in ballet companies before, and we'll get into that at, uh, in a bit. But yeah. you, you sort of, the, the methodology that you had as a younger teacher, in other words, you had to change it a bit to suit uh, your situation now. 
Absolutely. And there's something I learned that really blew my mind. Um, specifically in community colleges, you have to be evaluated every six semesters, at least here in mm -hmm. California. And it's actually a very positive experience, but it's nerve wracking. And one, my peer evaluator said, Nancy, you know, how did she put it? It was almost like, you know, you do all of this stuff to hopefully inspire your students. Sorry, car. <laughs> no, no, no problem. <laughs> they wind up going, oh, look at that. Oh, look at her go. And like nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> took it to heart what she's saying, like, okay, I'm working way too hard. I'm mm -hmm. just assuming I'm going to inspire them and they're going to emulate this. And and that was a harsh reality. Like, that's not. So put put it back on them. So I, like this transition of how right. I'm going to differently happen. And I want to be I'm thankful for those evaluations, even though they are nerve wracking because it is about empowering. Mm -hmm. Like in other words, um, you know, make them, make the student <laughs> think and make them move and, and let them decide how, how it's supposed to look within, within certain, <laughs> within a certain framework, right? Because we, we don't want it. Part of what I, I see a lot of times is that um, you want there to be structure and you want them to be able to have a reference that is the reference for dance, right? In a bigger way. So when they go yeah. to the concert or when they choreograph on their own, or if they go off and they said, my teacher was Nancy, right? That, you know, it's all sort of aligned, if you will, right? As an artist or an art, you know, someone who has been a student of art. That's kind of the way I say it. But in other words, you do need to give them a little more room and put, put the onus on them, right, to explore. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And that was a big learning curve. It took, took a while and several injuries to learn that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, tell but, us, be, well, I'm sorry, what were you saying? No, no. I said, well, what, 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 before you moved to LA, right, there's a bit of a story, right? Oh, so, so yeah. how many, what, what was fascinating to me is the number of LA companies that you have experience with and your trajectory from, let's say, when you auditioned for the first one until you decided to leave and then move to LA. So if you could give us a bit more of that uh, story sure. for us. Would be oh yeah. Well, it's really fascinating, David, because where we were at in COVID when we couldn't go to studios and we were doing home practice brought me right back to when I was a little girl, really wanting this career. We lived in the country. So a good studio was really a good studio was an hour and a half away. And so I had an hour one class once a week. So I did home workouts. So um, when I, this is in uh, Virginia, mm -hmm. auditioned for Washington, DC, Washington Ballet at 15 and was accepted into their apprenticeship program. And it wasn't until that moment that my training really kicked in because of the daily classes. So I moved away from home very, very early. And um, uh, so began my Truly, my career began at 15, working with Washington Ballet, and then things changed at that company, and then I moved to Richmond Ballet, and that was the first year, the first company of, the, of Virginia, really. Mm -hmm. So as a member of that company, the director is still there today, Stoner Winslet. And now, this is where I really learned versatility. I was there for four years, starting as a trainee and ended as a principal. Talk about opportunity, talk about seeing dancers' gifts, you know, so it was a very positive experience, and, um, you know, that director really groomed, groomed all sure. of it, wow. yeah, which is beautiful, um, but there was something about still being in my hometown of Virginia, I just felt this need to keep, keep exploring and keep traveling, I would jump on the train and go to uh, the, um, New York and audition, yeah. And lo and behold, even though I wanted to get out of the South, I wind up <laughs> auditioning for Louisville Ballet, Kentucky, and got it. So I moved to Louisville Ballet, which is a beautiful company, beautiful city, but very, very traditional. Everyone had their roles, and there really wasn't any opportunity to move up. You just, you had your wow. position. And before, before this, I want to say I did, I went to Milwaukee Ballet for their summer program. I was in Vermont at one point <laughs> for a summer program. These summer programs are really powerful for dancers, you know, mm -hmm. especially if it's your first time away from home, it's very helpful. So what happened at Louisville is I had a 
boyfriend who no, yeah. followed me from Virginia to Louisville, right on the Nutcracker. So of course they snagged him right up because they always need men. And um, he always wanted to be an actor. So while that summer, he's like, I'm going to drive to LA. You know, we were basically going to say goodbye, um, which was fine. It wasn't like the love of my heart. But this person was very important in my life because I decided, you know, what else am I going to do this summer? I'll drive with you cross country. It was great. We saw the Grand Canyon. But when we got to LA, he wanted to be an actor. But when I saw the dance scene here, I was just blown away mm -hmm. and jumped into jazz class and thought, I need to do this. And so, so what time, I'm sorry, what time, uh, uh, time period was this when you were Nin in LA, like the year, the years? 1988. Right, right. So, yeah. Right, right. So now, it was, I, it was, it I, was I, around the time where things started to pop, right? Because there were a lot uh, of, a lot of things happening for entertainment during that time. Am I correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. We had these icons to, to reach for as our goals of, you know, Janet Jackson, Michael Jackson, Paula Abdul, mm -hmm. in it into a lot of um, um, entertainment at conventions was a big thing. And that played really well. And the convention circuit didn't really hit quite yet where you go and teach to cities all around. So like the real deal MTV movie awards, uh, Oscars, it was picket, you know? So it was really a lot was available to dancers and very, very exciting. So, but uh, something I didn't share with you, David is- Oh, really? Okay a love-hate relationship with ballet itself because uh -huh. it's easy on my body. It, I don't have the natural turnout. It was a constant you know, push for me to work that extra mile to at least be acceptable. And my, my technique was good, but I had to really, I had to work it. Uh -huh. And I felt this freedom in LA. I remember being in like a little crop top and shorts and like, yeah, I'm working it. <laughs> My stomach's showing. I'm like, I love. So I actually left ballet for about two years. I figured that's it. I'm I'm oh. not a ballerina anymore. So for only two years, and then did you, did you go back, or 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 what happened uh, after two years? What what brought you back in? It's in here. You oh, can't, okay. Okay. You can't leave it. You know. Right. I mean, right. I would be auditioning for all this cool stuff, and I would keep booking ballet <laughs> jobs. Or I needed a ballerina in a commercial, or uh, this posture, I, I was on news with posture and uh, they really wanted the pink tutu. It was, so it's really interesting. And um, I just found my way back, you know, to it. Yeah. But you didn't dance with any more companies, right? I mean, at that point, it was it was strictly commercial work and you were auditioning, auditioning, and then you were doing other independent things. Yeah, that independent freelance dancer life had begun when I moved out here and... Mm -hmm. And okay. it's, a <laughs> it's a hustle. Yeah. So let me ask you, what was the biggest takeaway? Or what is the biggest takeaway uh, from your experience uh, as a ballerina or in, in ballet? Because I look, during the time in the 80s, I say I, that would have been the time that I could have, if I had made the decision to make the jump into the modern or contemporary dance world. Mm -hmm. Then there was a time where I felt like it kind of died down. And then all of a sudden they were like, I look around, I have throngs of young people now that are interested in ballet. I mean, throngs of them, right? So my hope is that when they see our, our conversation, that they will get a takeaway from, from what you've provided as, well, you know, you know so too. You, the yeah. best, best and the worst of your experience. Now, you've told us a little bit about your challenges, but what, what in general, what is the takeaway for someone yeah. who's interested in ballet and his a career there? Well, let, let me share this first, is mm -hmm. the pivotal point of my life was um, Turning Point, the movie. Right, sure. With Shirley MacLaine and Ann yes, yeah, yes. Oh, my God. And uh, Flashdance. Flashdance. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Remember, you know, you're in this war. Like, sometimes you need to want something so badly you know, and not just, oh, I think this would be nice. And I remember sitting in the seat in that movie theater. And I want, and I'm, woohoo, I want <laughs> so badly, you know, I feel it in every, in my, you know. So to actually 
want to say a year later, fulfill that dream or at least be on the way. Um, it, it was phenomenal for me. And I'll, I'll share the specifics why. Mm -hmm. You know, first off, you are an athlete. And I feel like we are doing these godly things, you know, it, it, technically, emotionally, spiritually, we come together as a company. And, you know, we see these uh, step up, step up to all these dance movies that show more cutthroat and nastiness that, of course, there's that that happens. However, my experience is we are a team. We are athletes. We're, we have this common goal. And even if you didn't get the role you were hoping for, you have this role. So, you know, it, it, it was a beautiful experience that I will never forget. And it is part of my life today, every single day. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. I, I teach dancers now, like who tend to be a little bit lackadaisy or don't understand the etiquette of dance, that when you are on stage, that is a gift, you know, mm -hmm. that is a gracious, gift for you to be performing in front of the audience because I remember feeling that and I think when you felt like you were getting pulled and wrapped up in dance I, I want to say that when we perform on stage in front of people it seems to seal the deal yeah you know, like oh, that was pretty cool yeah, yeah I'd does. like to do that again yeah yeah, yeah. So, so my company experience especially in Richmond Ballet mm -hmm. who you look up today she, they're doing phenomenal things and by the way they kept going throughout the pandemic they, they made masks that match their costume but she kept going and i just really respect that but we did limon we did balanchine we did classical we did modern we did jazz you know we did some luigi and, and there, even to a point did luigi as well you did the luigi yeah we did yeah not not from but our, our ballet master had trained in luigi and he oh. Okay. Yes, and created this one piece that so I you know got that style back then oh. as a ballerina uh -huh. like this is cool and you know yeah. each choreographer that came in man they've got all these stories and personalities so that experience makes me realize how versatile dancers are in their heads too because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. one rehearsal with this choreographer <laughs> and then you gotta switch gears you know, and adapt to this person's way of teaching. I think dancers are very, very smart and adaptable and dedicated and disciplined. Yeah. Look, I, I agree with everything you say. It's, it's, it's <laughs> I feel like we're in a secret club. Now, what's interesting is because a lot of people that were in those companies didn't really know me as a dancer, right? Because I came to it late. They didn't really consider me a dance person because they didn't see me in the in the in in, in uh, rehearsal or space right so i didn't come up in the traditional way i actually started with a pickup dance company rather late in new york city and that company was not as well known amongst the new york dance community they still picked us oh yeah we know about them but we were not the center we clearly were not the center but i caught up yeah with where I would have been had I started much, much early. And to the point that you said, um, this, this focus on teamwork, it's a really, I really wanna you know, focus on that because I think a lot of people don't understand really what it takes in order for something like a performance to, 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 to be created and then presented to an audience. I think there's something lost on the audience. Now, of course they wouldn't know, right? But I think, you know, to your point about teaching, mm -hmm. it's part of what, at least when I've taught in the past, I try to instill in yes. the person that I'm showing of this sort of give and take and how you come into it as a team. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. It, it, it um, is. And it, it, what about this aspect? And you've talked about it a bit, we, the aspect of community. I think also, you know, we, we kind of talked about this before we, we actually came here. There's a communal aspect, which you've touched upon, you just explained, but there is something even more important that dance companies or dancers do for yeah. the community. I mean, what's your take on that? Well, I can share this transition that's happened for me. But first of all, I'm an introvert. You're, I'm, you're, a, I'm shy. 
and I'm, <laughs> you know, so it's easier for me uh -huh. <laughs> to stay over here in my uh -huh. little room. Um, you know, I'd worked at a community college for 15 years, just creating my little concert pieces and nobody knew who I was. And to answer your question earlier in 2015, when I stepped out creating LA Dance Moves, that was a way of me stepping out literally and mm -hmm. hide, stop hiding my gifts. And, and that means to be of the community. So I had to start showing, you know, show business, show me what I do, how I do it, why I do it, you know, and, I don't believe in sharing everything on social media, but I, I share some of these aspects and it it's touched me so much to be of the community. And what happened for me when COVID hit <laughs> and from March to June, I tried to do these collaborative videos where people just to try to be positive, people send me videos and I'll make this collaborative video of us being positive and working out at home. And then by, by July, I'm like, this is crap. And I said, I'm, I'm going to do this. I made my first virtual concert. I invited six dancers. We found a warehouse in LA to work out of, you know, they didn't care. <laughs> and I filmed it because I'm like, I need to embrace my community. And so with that act, you know, that embrace the uh, a website designer, de designer and a logo and, you know, people who film and people who edit. And then I got a fiscal sponsor and, I started creating relationships with my community. And I, I, you know, you think you can just throw something on social media and this magic happens. It's still the old fashioned way, it is. It is. meeting, talking, suit up and show up, get on a phone call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think um, I, I, I agree. It's, it's, um, how can I put it? Well, I, I, I'll, I'll say it this way. Um, in Switzerland, let's say when a space is not being utilized, a store space or a storefront, what I find is a lot of times what the store owners will do is they will let, actually let, but allow um, artists to hang their work in the space. Now, I've seen it more and more in the last year because of COVID, right? where there were physical, you know, retail stores. And I just think it's fascinating. I, I mean, that, that happens also in the United States, but not on a consistent, it's not a, it's not a given, wow. right? It's not a given. No. I've seen more of that in Switzerland than I have in the United States. In mm. other words, art is a community builder, yeah. right? It's a, it's a, yeah. it's a draw. And, and we're in a, in a very good place now because, Fortunately or unfortunately for COVID, mm. we are in a very good place because we're going to have more of these opportunities to build. And I think and I hope that more people are going to understand what it is that we bring to the table through this. I program. love that. It, we almost have to tell them. <laughs> yeah, of course. When you see performance, this is what happens to you. Like I, I've been thinking about this and creating e either an article or I, I still need to do an opt-in to my website. I'm thinking, well, maybe this would be a great PDF. Th this is what happens to your brain when you watch dance. Right. Or, you know, because usually we get dragged to the theater or because it's the parents of the kid. But, like, for people to willfully want to see art, I, I, I don't know. It's hit and miss. Um, but I do know that I also want to create dance in my way that appeals to the younger audience. Sure. And... Um, how do we do that? You know, mm -hmm. uh, on that. <laughs> there, there, there are definite ideas. Let me, let me ask you this question before I get to sure. that though. Like what is the sure, difference sure. between your experience as an East coast person and then the move to the West coast and just sort of the difference in the communities and sort of maybe how dance is received, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I remember like when I said, I grab a train, go to New York that, you know, if you got the skills, you're in, you're in an audition and you can see who's got it, who doesn't. And it's just so obvious, you know, you, you show them what you can do and you either book the job or you don't. And I feel like the East Coast is m m truer to that almost traditional way of presenting what you do and book a job. Um, 
<laughs> West Coast, it's more mysterious. And it's more, you know, when you think about it, it's for camera. So you can have the goods, but you yeah. need to bring it in a whole different way and work that camera and work that energy and have this confidence and ownership of what you do like nothing else. Yeah. And it's this weird cycle where when you book jobs, you get this really cool confidence and like I'm in the, I'm in the zone, which creates more confidence, which books more jobs, but you need that confidence to book the jobs. So West Coast is more of the swag, um, you know, and, and definitely working it for camera and working with people who are in, like let's say we specific, specifically choreographers who you need to go to their classes if they have public classes and let them see you, you know, work that, which is probably the same on the West Coast or New York or Steps or, you know, things like that. But because when they book a gig, yeah, they're going to hold an audition, but they're still going to pull from people who know, they know will bring it. So it's an interesting, I mean, if you just think of yourself as an actor, like the life of an actor, it'll be easier to understand dance here on the West Coast. Yeah, yeah. Because they, they're similar, similar very, paths. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, we 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 kind of hinted on this in the last question before we started talking about East Coast West Coast. Uh -huh. But um, what are your thoughts on social media um, with regard to dance? Now, specifically, I'll throw out that, and we talked about this before that TikTok seems to be one of the platforms where dance is, um, as they say, blowing up. Right. So, mm -hmm. how how do you see your organization, LA Dance Moves, involved in social media, or how, wh what's going on with it now, and sort of where do you see it moving? Maybe that's the question. Okay, couple of questions here. Yeah. So, <laughs> let me take your where first. is it now? Where is it going? And what are your thoughts on social media? Okay. Well, LA Dance Moves was always a media, a digital media company. Mm -hmm. um, and then with COVID, that really propelled it into virtual concerts. But now people are a little tired of that. They want to see the real deal. So for the first time I did an, a live, it was still a filming, but I invited an audience. Um, but I will, LA Dance Moves will continue to be a digital company so I can reach Switzerland, you know, reach people all over the world. I remember when I had my first digital concert, I had someone from Hong Kong buy a ticket. I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, so we will do both. Social media is vital. It is marketing. It is free advertisement. We used to have to buy a, you know, a slot on television if you want to advertise or have a commercial. Mm -hmm. So is the right way. It's brilliant, but let's talk about the other way. And maybe this, you, we're seeing, you were saying this new wave of dancers because one, like look at Instagram. These people are posting things that are inhuman <laughs> <laughs> and right. these standards that you could never do this with your body. You just have these natural gifts and you're working it for the camera. It can be dangerous. And it can be productive and like you know, this never ending goal of trying to reach something, it's just not possible. So I really uh, like to warn dancers to, you know, use it as a tool and put it down and go be out in the real world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? um, but what, what, what I see also is, um, again, it kind of goes back to the teaching aspect, right? So. The, the Instagram, that's that's the wish and the dream, right? That's the the aspiration. But then there's the aspect of the, okay, getting in the classroom and doing the work and then interacting with your peers and also being taught and being able to, to, to receive instruction so that in the yeah. end, the performance is the best that it possibly can be, right? So that's always been my, because I, I, I love to promote. I love to promote, I love the art of selling. I love it. So part of what my issue was with dance was that it was heavy on the art, but not on like the end product so that, that we could sell it. And then that money or that revenue could come back in and help that, the beginning stage. Yeah. Well, you know? something I want to share, David, is um, I... I've done a few fantastic Fridays on my Instagram, and then I've done a couple of some some lectures. And one of one of my lectures is about 
the fact that regardless if you're in a company or an independent dancer or even not dancer at all, it kind of parallels like you are an entrepreneur. From the first time you audition for a role for Nutcracker, let's say, or audition for a company, it doesn't matter. You are placing yourself in a position that you must fall into that entrepreneurial place and market yourself. And dancers will say, I, I don't have a business side. I, I can't do any of that. Like, well, sorry, <laughs> that's part of the deal. Yeah, it is. It really is. I mean, it's probably one of the reasons why I, I didn't pursue dance initially was because I the pull I had a part time job that I had I had to, I had to work in high school. Yeah. I loved the challenge of trying to sell to the public. That's right? amazing. So that, I, I worked yeah. in a retail store. Somebody who was a dancer got me that first job, and she would drive me every day out to Livingston Mall in New Jersey, wow. and and she she got, she got me the first job and. I really didn't know what I was doing, but even hindsight, I look at that experience and say, wait a minute, David, you didn't know what you were doing, but you can even look back on what you did and did not do 30 some odd years ago, and it still helps you, out, right? So if I have to make a, 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 a fundraising call, right? Mm -hmm. I remember those, 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 those days and, and, and yeah. kind of, why am I supposed, like, why am I here? Like, like, like. How can I put it? I, do, I, I can connect all of the different pieces now. So I have confidence to pick up the phone. Whereas before I was just thrown into the mix, like sell that polo shirt or sell it, you know, or do this. And then you're like, well, I don't know. I'll greet the person at the door. Oh, I don't know what to do. Now I totally get every single part that's supposed to happen. So I'm a much more um, experienced salesperson. And I th I'm assuming dancers feel the same way that I did when I first started, you know, uh, yeah. at the store. They don't have the tools necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, one thing that came to mind, well, first of all, one thing that came to mind when you were talking is you must love the psychology of what's going on in people's brains yes. and what makes them tick because you're not afraid of it. You're like, it no, yeah, because it's like... sure it would look great on you. <laughs> well, I mean, look, let's say if you have... I'll give you another example. This is funny. Then I'll ask you another question to ask you. When I started dancing with this pickup company, the person who put me in touch was a ballet, an older ballet woman, who ballet teacher who said, um, oh, you need to meet so-and-so. You need to meet so-and-so. And I was like, okay. And I knew enough at that time that anytime someone would say something about me with regard to dance, I just do it. I didn't even question. I was like, all right, David, just do what they say and see what happens, right? So I ended up uh, auditioning with this person. And literally, that was the first time that I had to follow this person's psychology every single day. Like it was, well, every time we had an, uh, a, a rehearsal. So yeah. it wasn't just, okay, you're going to do these moves or you're going to learn these moves. I'm literally learning this choreographer's psychology yeah. alongside of this, the movement, you understand what I mean? And yeah. it, it, it definitely woke me up and it was a training for future interactions with people. Amazing. See that, okay. <laughs> That's an example of what I say like, oh my gosh, I have another- You know what I'm saying, right? You know I what do, I'm saying, I right? do. Because you have soaking... to know them because they're giving you stuff to do, right? Yeah, but you're soaking up every avenue of, I'm here at this place in time right now and I'm gonna, I'm going to make this work for me. And like, you're just, you're a sponge. Yeah, you have to be. You have when, to be. If you're going to be successful. You do, you do. And I talk to dancers about, look at the big picture, you know, mm -hmm. big picture. But um, when we're talking about social media, I rehearsed, yes. I was having more in the spring. I'm interacting with this one dancer. We did something really cool. And I look around and everybody's on their phone, you know. <laughs> oh, like that's, this is not, so, we've been, a year and a half in our, you know, living rooms and you're, you're on your phone, this is not serving you, you know, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. and, and take your mentality of uh, I'm learning your philosophy. I'm learning what's going on in your brain on how you create, not only create, but, you know, life. It's beautiful. Well, well, let me ask you a further question. Like, how do you prepare a student in class nowadays? I mean, this is a different type of person. How, like, what's your approach? Yeah. Well, for one, there's two, two different things. Uh, if my students at a 
at say at the college, I do teach a course. If they're if they step into our concert program, I teach a course uh, concurrently. It's just like a two Saturday course called the big picture. And it's really, it's elements of theater. It prepares them of everything that's gonna go on. So they're not green <laughs> when mm -hmm. they stage, but it's really turned into more of a psycho psychological reflection of how we work as people and dancers and artists, but it's to open their minds. Like, and we start off this course with being the producer of a Broadway, you know, musical and mm -hmm. every that it would take to put this together and it's really fascinating this transition that happens so I, I want my dancers to be more than what they are and to to see the process go, that's going on and be responsible um more than just showing up and I you know I do that in ways of my expectations of them of you know expectations of teamwork this is what I want from you so it's really clear rather than waiting for things to not happen and be frustrated i lay it out and it, believe me it's taken me a long time <laughs> to get to this place yeah well let's, let's when, talk, what, what were you yeah. gonna say i'm sorry the only other one i wanted to say is for my company mm -hmm. it's very different i actually study dancers a long time before i ask them to 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 come to a project or join i watch how they show up in the world how they handle adversity if i'm lucky enough to be working with them as a student um, or in a different situation, but I, I don't just ask people because, oh, what a beautiful arabesque, come work with me. I, I want dancers who are entrepreneurs and, and have visions and goals and, you know. Yeah, it's, look, yeah, I hear you 100%. I mean, when you, when you find someone that's good, it, you really know it, right? You know it because they, there, there is a, is a, a, a jump in level, not just choreography or, or, or body wise, there's a mentality yeah. jump, right? Yeah, mentality, professionalism, mm -hmm. preparation, they get it, they get what you're going through, mm -hmm. they respect what you're going through. It, mm -hmm. They have other things in life besides dance. I've noticed this, if people have balanced, um, it affects their dancing even in more. Way. Hmm. Let's talk mm. about your choreography. Let's talk about mm. your choreography and, and how you approach it, and then also how how you how how you get it on to video, or how you, you yeah. know, your process, right? So yeah, um, what is the process for you in terms of choreography? Is there any like to say when you go into the room, are you there by yourself? Do you require that you have other dancers around? How much prep time? You you tell us how. Sure, sure. It's no just words. fascinating how everybody's artistic process is so different. Mm -hmm. But I, I have to go back just a little bit in time um, to remember I said I was kind of hiding and, you know, keeping in the corner. And there was a specific year, uh, it was about three years after my dad died, that it just hit me that I wanted to create something very special uh, for him um, and my mom. My mom is still with us. And I remember as I was preparing for this, even my husband was like, what are you working on? This is really pulling so much from you. I said, I, I've decided to take myself seriously. And he was like, I like that. <laughs> so the process for me changed very, very much. So I used to do very frontal choreography, very pleasing, which is great, you know, very pleasing to the audience and fun and lighthearted to make this shift to the storytelling. So my process is very... Woo, it's, it, it's very emotional and heartfelt, but I will do a lot of thinking ahead of time. I listen to the music, I visualize, I mind map. I um, will listen to the music all different times of day, morning, night, driving, <laughs> and get this story. And why, why are we going here? Where, what's the arc and how do I want to, my audience, how do I want to leave this with my audience? And so this piece uh, back in 2012, really in a sense started LA Dance Moves. So my process starts with that. I actually am not one of those choreographers that comes in and go, oh, let's try this. Or I, I can't create on the spot. Maybe it's, maybe it's a trust thing with myself, but I, I prefer to have it all prepared and I'll throw it all out if I have to, but I know where we're going and I'll tweak and morph or adjust on my dancers. But generally, uh, I I've, I've pretty much have it ready to go before mm -hmm. we start rehearsal. Mm -hmm. 
I have my stick figures and my notes. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. But, I, um, I, um, how, how can I say it? I think, I mean, I haven't done it in a while. I haven't choreographed mm -hmm. in a while. Yeah. But what I, what I do, I do have a, a sort of free form. Let's just put it this way. I, I now have a greater respect for having the structure and having everything ready before, of course. But I also still love this idea of making something up on the spot. And I think there's got to be, um, at least from my from from where I am, and I haven't done it in a while, that impromptu or this um, how do how do you call it um, improvisation? Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you one brief story. I'm sure you can sure. relate to this. What we started doing, um, we started doing similar work that you did in Basel under my own dance company. And we were brought into uh, the one of the big pharma companies uh, to do lots of different diversity work and getting people to move and so on. But then someone saw us do this work and there was another opportunity where they pulled us into improvisation but it was strictly improvisation. So I had stonewalled them a couple of times and I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that, right? Because it wasn't movement. It wasn't like dance movement. I finally said, okay, David, if somebody comes to you and they ask you something regarding dance or do, you know, whatever, you have to say yes. So I had the courage, I said yes, and I did it. And they did ask us to do all kinds of different things, but I'm telling you that I grew as a result of that experience because it was so different. I mean, these people were not dancers. They were not dancers. They were more actor type people, comics, comedians. I had to be funny on the spot. That's not me, right? But it did help me yeah. ultimately in my life, yeah. right? It, wow. it allowed me to be um, even more spontaneous in picking up the phone and asking for money. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, I, I wasn't expecting that. That's beautiful. I mean, I'm telling you, I mean, I'm, I'm just being honest. It's like, this is why I think this is part of why I want to do uh, interview people like you and, and have this platform because I learned so much, even as you're telling me what your experience is, I'm integrating yeah. your, yeah. I'm integrating. So you say, oh, David, it's great for you to do all of this. I'm like, look, I'm getting something out of it as well. You're helping me. <laughs> You know, you're helping me. It's not a one-sided thing. You know, I mean? that's like, cool. I, I, I absorb even as I'm having a conversation with you. It really is, you know. Um, that's amazing. I wish other people could experience what I'm experiencing. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 it does. Well, look, tell us, tell us. I don't, I don't want to keep you any longer, but tell us how would people be able to reach you um, yeah. if people are interested in supporting LA Dance Moves. Or, uh, you know, et cetera, yeah. how, you sure, know, sure. how the best ways should it be social media, email, so on. Yeah, well, I mean, you can check out ladancemoves.com first off to see a little bit more about the company. Um, I have to say, I need to add a work with me tab, and that's in the, in the works. But you can email me, uh, info at ladancemoves.com, and that's on the website as well. Um, all the social medias, Instagram, Facebook. I mean, you can message me, but you, it's, you can just email me. Um, there's a YouTube channel to check out works. There's quite a few works that I have not shared yet. They're in the vault. <laughs> um, and like, maybe yeah, we need we, to see them like, like, like Prince, you hide them away. And them them, right? <laughs> Create intrigue. They're in the vault. But they're in the vault, Nancy's vault. Well, look, but, I, is and and what else what else um can you add like you also have something yeah. to give away right is that yes i do i do and i think that's how you found me i shared the fact that i had my first publication i'm uh co-authored a book with about 35 other entrepreneurs so my story is in this book which david i want to mail to you so we'll talk after this <laughs> um, but mailing it out out of the u.s gets pretty expensive so i wanted to give a free ebook i think it's just of my chapter um, but I can give you a link of how to get the book on Amazon if you're interested. But I would like to give you my chapter, which is my story, for free for anybody. You can just, I guess, email me or reach out to David. I'd be happy to send that out. Um, I think it'll come in a Google Drive link for you to read. Um, would love for you to just 
read the story and what I'm up to. Okay. Is yeah. there anything else that we forgot to mention? I think we more or less just covered. that I'm I'm a I love uh, this you know podcast interviews lectures guest teaching you know on Zoom so I can reach the world if you would like me to come to your facility on Zoom I'm I'm available uh, or just to share my story and my mission and passion yeah. so and info at LA Dance Moves is easiest and oh, I just I mean want to Thank Say you, what? David. How I want to thank you, not, not only for interviewing me, but all the artists and giving artists a voice. That's something that is uh, also why I do LA Dance Moves. It is my voice. I have an Italian Catholic family of five older brothers, and I was the youngest. So it kind of, my voice wasn't heard very much. And it was interesting by writing my chapter, I discovered this about myself. So to have a platform from you is, is, is a gift. So thank oh, you. Five older brothers. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Rock That's and amazing. roll, loud. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you, you, have, a, you have a story just in that alone. In, in that, yeah. Wow. <laughs> you continue. Wow. Look, it, it's been a pleasure. I mean, um, I wish you all the success. We'll be in conversation later. And what I would like, though, is, and, and you can decide how you want to do this, is I want to make sure that people can at least see the choreography. So we'll figure out a way to perhaps integrate anything that you want into the video, into this interview, so that we okay. have an intro or we can put it, you know, somewhere else. Okay. And we'll, you know, once we edit it, we will put it out there and we'll try to get as many views and likes as we do for every video that we uh, produce. That's amazing. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I, so with that, I have an idea already of what will be <laughs> from my vault. So yeah. that'll be juicy. 